let me end this section by asking each of you um, what agent you're excited about. Uh, if you could talk a little bit about the mechanism of action and, and some of the preliminary results you've seen. And maybe I'll, I'll start with, with Rami, because you're on a roll. All right, thank you. <laughs> so, uh, so I think in, in the lower risk, uh, I think we are really excited about the TGF beta inhibitors. Uh, Lospatercept is the drug that's moving forward in this area. So the background for this, obviously, the TGF beta pathway is, is overexpressed or activated in MDS patients. There are many ligands that bind uh, super family of receptors for the TGF beta, but they contribute to the myelosuppression in MDS, and they could be targeted. One approach targeting them is those fusion proteins that act like a trap, and they bind the ligands before binding the receptor. So there are two drugs that have been in studies, so Tatercept, which we conducted the studies in the United States, and the Spatercept that the studies were done originally in Europe. One of them act, uh, you know, targets type 2A active in receptor, while the other one type 2B. Very similar drugs, maybe Sotatercept has a little bit bone remodeling effect, Lusbatercept less. Uh, the first interest in those studies came when they were using them in healthy volunteers for osteoporosis, and those limiting toxicity was actually erythrocytosis. Uh, it turns out they work on improving late erythropoiesis, uh, dif different a little bit from the ESAs. So uh, both studies had looked at lower risk MDS patients, we divided the patients into what we call a high transfusion burden, low transfusion burden. And both studies showed promising signal of response, especially on those that are low transfusion burden, that had less than four units in eight weeks. Uh, and we've seen transfusion independence. One thing that stood out as an observation early on, that patients that had ring sideroblast had higher responses, uh, which led actually to more patients being enriched in the European study extension phase of losbatercept being old with ring sideroblast. But those patients, especially if they have low transfusion burden, the response rates more, there were more than 60, 70%. Many patients became trans independent. So based on that, that study now had moved to a phase uh, three um, randomized study called the Medalist, where patients are randomized between uh, a placebo and the Lispatercept, and that study is active and enrolling patients. So I think this is a promising agent and act going after a certain selected population that we hope if those studies are positive will translate to a new medication for patients with lower risk MDS. Ellen? I, as a leukemia doctor as well as an MDS uh, physician, you know, I've been really excited by seeing the results of immunotherapy, particularly in CLL and ALL. And I'm excited about the, um, the next sort of class of antibodies that may be targeting uh, targets in myeloid uh, diseases. So I think that they are drugs that could be well tolerated in an older population. You know, when we talked about combination therapy before, and we, as leukemia doctors, how we like to go at it with, with both guns, you know, what we, we don't have in leukemia studies is really populations of people in their late 70s and 80s like we have in myelodysplastic syndrome, which is really a brave new world, actually, of treating patients. So I'm excited about the idea of maybe uh, antibody therapy in older patients that it could be well tolerated with uh, less sort of, uh, 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 you know, gunfire to the, to the uh, other uh, regions of the body, and it's something that they could tolerate a little bit better. So the uh, SGN trial, the CD33 plus um, a hypomethylating agent, it's a combination therapy, but again, it's using something that might not be so, myelo so um, suppressive of the blood count, so it may be a really good thing to combine combine with a hypomethylating agent. Great. Jamil? Well, I think it's important to come up with a second line uh, for MDS patients, particularly high-risk disease. And for that reason, I think I opted to uh, participate in the Rigosertib trials. And I'm sure you know that Rigosertib is a dual, multi, uh, dual kinase inhibitor uh, that targets the um, PI3 kinase uh, mTOR pathway and also pololite kinases, which I learned that they actually have a role in stabilizing the mitotic spindle. And presumably, if you interfere with that process, then that uh, process of mitosis gets disrupted, and then the cells uh, undergo apoptosis. So in the very initial phase one, two studies, Rodrigo Certi demonstrated that actually can have reduction in the blast percentage in, consistent with uh, the initial uh, mechanism of action of this drug. Um, so it's very interesting to actually see that the phase three study, the one-time trial that took patients who have high-risk MDS, 
that had uh, failed the hypomethylating agent, and then they were randomized to best supportive care versus rigo it did not actually achieve its primary endpoint of uh, uh, prolonged overall survival. However, when they went back and sort of did an ad hoc analysis of the study, uh, they demonstrated that people who actually did not achieve any response, progressed through hypomethylating therapy, are the ones who may actually have a survival advantage, which is the reason why this uh, second phase three trial known as INSPIRE trials taking place in international studies, 30 different sites and over 200 patients that is addressing the same question with the difference that uh, those patients would have to have less than nine cycles of hypomethylators basically and fit the criteria of having RAB1, minimum of RAB1 and uh, higher to then uh, be randomized to this therapy versus uh, best supportive care. And interestingly, we have a, a patient that was on the one-time trial is ongoing for about 40 months. He's the only one on the trial and we'd like to actually close this study if possible. So it tells you <laughs> that within any given patient population, there's someone who just does respond beautifully well and certainly would be very nice to be able to offer patients a second line therapy for high risk. Yeah. So it's an unmet medical need. Well, I wanna thank my co-discussants for a fabulous discussion today. Um, I love when I, I sit at a table and I'm completely outclassed by the people around me, which uh, happens all the time at home, <laughs> and, and it's nice when it happens at work, too. Um, we've covered a lot of ground uh, related to the practice um, and management of MDS and how the field is rapidly evolving and what we can expect in the future. Um, before we end this discussion, I'd like to get um, final thoughts from each of the participants. Um, I'll start again with Dr. Kamraji. So, no, I think obviously we, we discussed plenty of data today. I think there is excitement in the field. When you look back in the last five years, we definitely learned about the biology much more. And I, I think we are determined all as a group that we need to change the, the natural history of this disease. We need to improve the outcome for our patients. And I think hopefully we'll be able to achieve that in the coming few years. I think this is a very exciting time, actually, in, in this field. Um, sort of the confluence of interest in aging and interest in the development of this disease. I think we're finding that there are mutations that occur as pa people age that may have dovetail into the development of disease. And is there a potential that we could interfere in the early phase of, of patients um, who are developing MDS? I think that this is a, a really exciting avenue of, of study, and I really look forward to seeing what happens in the next few years. Well, I, I think I have two wishes for my patients. One is to be able to have a predictor of response. I don't put people through cycles and cycles of therapy without knowing whether they're going to be responders or not. And second is to be able to have much more or many more options for them for therapy so that they don't feel like this is it and what next, you know? Yeah, we're in a remarkable time in the study of MDS um, where our understanding of the biology is skyrocketing and we can only hope that uh, the therapies we have available to treat our patients are gonna catch up soon. On behalf of our panel, uh, we thank you for joining us today.